and Brett Gardner will lead off. High fly ball, deep right center, Gritchick back on the track. See ya, a home run. Let the Gardy party begin. Gardy goes yardy, and the Yankees now take a 3 nothing lead. So he's two for two, came into the game three for his last 26. Torres off third, and Voigt off first. And see if Gardner can get the run in. And deals, and Gardner swings and drills one to deep right center field. That ball is high. It is far. It is gone. He has homered in back to back innings. This time a three run shot. It is 6 0 Yankees. Really similar to the last home run. Oh, he's having a day. It's a good thing he got on the bus today. High drive. Left center field on the run is Gardner. And he makes the play. What a day for Gardner as he fires into second, moving to third is Drury. He's just showing off now. I mean, I repeat everything because I'm on the air four hours every single day. But if it's in the ballpark, Gardner has a great chance to catch it. He's, he's an amazing outfielder. He is as underrated a player as there is. And he went back, jumped against the scoreboard wall, and made a great catch. Doesn't get any better than this moment right now. Ryan Braun batting top of the ninth. His team trailing by a run. Bases loaded, two outs. Braun, center field. Bader going back, watches it. Go! Yes! A grand slam for Ryan Braun on a 3 2 pitch with two outs. And the Brewers take the lead. My goodness, what an at bat by Ryan Braun. How about that one? Unbelievable. Boy, oh boy, what a game today here, partner. Unbelievable. Seven to four, Milwaukee here in the ninth inning. High drive, deep left center field. Bader is back. Braun, a grand slam. And the Brewers have taken the lead in the ninth on a Ryan Braun slam. Holy cow, what a shot by Braun. Flash the double deuces, Brawny. His 20th of the season. And the Brewers have a three run lead and an absolute blast. Wow. Oh boy. Came down to the final pitch and Ryan Braun smoked it. A grand slam. This could be a devastating blow for the Cardinals. Very special evening there as Carl's grandson, Mike Yastrzemski, will be leading off the ball game. Leading off for the Giants, the left fielder, number five, Mike Yastrzemski. And what a thrill for this young guy. See if Yastrzemski gets a fastball here that he can hit. He does. High into center field. It is out of here. Unbelievable. Number 20 here at Fenway Park for Mike Yastrzemski. And just about everybody is standing up for Mike Yastrzemski. Wow. What a cool moment that is to straight away center field. Oh, the emotions he must be feeling right now. He's trying to keep the poker face. He's trying to keep it. And they'll be looking folks. Team picture in the dugout. High five it in the stands. <laughs> that is awesome. Fly to center field deep. Going back, Jackie Bradley looking up, and it is gone. Yastrzemski takes it out of Fenway. His 20th home run of the season. A standing ovation at Fenway Park. That's pretty uh, cool. This is really special. So a two out walk to Bo Bichette, and then will ring Kevin Bichette over the plate. Drives this ball to center field and deep. Williams at the wall. This ball's gone. A two run home run for Kevin Biggio. After the two out walk, he cashes in his partner, Bo Bichette. 
Charlie Montoyo has been talking about wanting Biggio to be more aggressive early in counts. And boy, was he ever there. Just destroyed that ball. Biggio pulls it through the right side for a base hit. Kevin's second hit. Kevin Biggio will take it. He's aboard leading off the sixth inning with a single. 3-1. Ripped another base hit, maybe two. Vizio's around first, he's headed for second, and here's the throw to second, it is not in time. How about a three-hit game for Kevin Vizio? 11 for his last 27 at the plate. I think that is the fifth extra base hit on this run, too, for Kevin Vizio. Jeff Fry was the last Blue Jay to hit for the cycle. Vizio needs a triple to complete the cycle. That was August 17, 2001. Biggio has the homer, has the single, has the double. And now at Oriole Park at Camden Yards, gunning for a triple for the cycle. Swing a drive towards the gap in left center field. It's hit well. Going back is Mason, and he can't get it. It's off the wall. Kevin Biggio is racing towards third. He's on his way to third base, and he becomes the third player in franchise history to hit for the cycle. What a night for Kevin Biggio. He struck out in his first time up, then homered, single, doubled, and now he tripled. And hopefully, all right is Mason Williams who went into that wall hard. Bijou gets the cycle, he gets two RBIs, and Toronto has a 7-4 to four lead. 3-1 to Nimmo. And he hits it through the whole base hit, and that'll tie up the game. Lagaris comes in to score. Brandon Nimmo with his third hit of the day, an RBI single, and it's 4-4 in the ninth. Well, this team that never says die with a great rally here in the ninth inning. And on at first with an RBI single is Brandon Nimmo. The Mets have tied it 4-4, and they are in play for a big inning here. Runners at first and second, nobody out. And the big boys coming up. Inside ball four, and the Mets take the lead. Harvey comes in, walks Alonzo on four pitches. Davis trots in with the go-ahead run. And Alonzo with a second run batted in of the game. Now at 113 for the year, and the Mets have a 5-4 to four lead. Again, the 1-2. And Cano bangs one right behind the bag. It's second booted by Story, but it goes right to Hanson. High throw, and McMahon comes down on the back. A run comes home to make it six to four. A double up Cano, but Nimmo scores from third. The Mets get an insurance run and lead six to four. Again, McNeil dashing down the line, trying to get Harvey's attention. And Lugo lines one into center field for a base hit, and that'll bring in a run. Seth Lugo in his first plate appearance of the season. A base hit to drive in the fourth one of the inning, and it's 7-4 to four New York. Seth Lugo in a rare plate appearance on at first with an RBI single. It is a four-run ninth inning for the Mets, and they have taken a 7-4 to four lead. I told you he could hit a little bit. Lugo gets his fourth career run batted in, and he just found some room up the middle of the field and poked the ball to center. Yes, for the final time in the regular season, CeCe Sabathia will be towing the slab in the boogie down Bronx. <laughs> for the last time. There's Amber Sabathia, CeCe's wife. Whole family is here to watch Dad on the mound. Popped up on the right side. LeMayu is there. Infield fly rule called. And we'll let you listen as CC will come off the mound for the final time here in the regular season for the Yankees. 11 years of great work by Sabathia in pinstripes. And you'll listen to the crowd. Give him some love. C.C. Sabathia came here as a free agent. They asked him, please, change the culture, change the clubhouse, help us win a championship, and he did it in that first year. Crowd showed him love, and you could see the affection his teammates have for him as he turns the ball over to Domingo Herman. You, know, you, you see the family. The fans do appreciate great players, but I, I think players 
understand what it takes to, to put together a career like CC Sabathi has had. It's got to be a heartfelt moment right there from his wife. There's his mom, Margie. There's Brian Goodwin, a left hand hitter. And the pitch is swung on and popped up. Infield fly rule called. LeMay, who's going to catch it anyway. And there are two away. And they're starting the applause as the Yankees come out of the dugout. Didi Gregorius applauding on the mound. And listen to this applause. Standing ovation. CC tips his cap. Last time starting here at Yankee Stadium. Beautiful sight here. It's the first one out of the dugout was Dellen Batances in a walking boot. That's going to be for Sabathia. He'll get a nice round of applause as he departs here in his last regular season start wearing the Yankee pinstripes. And uh, you see his teammates coming out onto the warning track. And they're going to welcome him back. We mentioned this is the last time he'll pitch here in the regular season. He gives a tip of the cap to the fans as he heads back to his dugout. Tying run at third, the speedy Spangenberg. One two pitch, Grisham strikes out. And Mejia, low throw, and it gets away! Oh my goodness! Spangenberg scores the tying run. The Padres are saying he was out of the baseline. And the umpires will gather. This is going to be an interesting call here. I think they're talking about the ball hitting the foot of Grisham. All the umpires are getting together to see about this call on whether it was foul or if it's a strike three. If it's foul, we go back to third and it's still 2 1. If it's strike three, safe at first. They're saying he's out at first base. So Padres all over it now. Craig Council out to argue. Let's see where he was down the line, clearly inside the line there. Really turned into it at that point, yes. Perhaps also the bat got in Mejia's way. They are pointing towards the ground, and maybe they're going to say that impacted Mejia's throw because the bat was out in front of home plate, or maybe he threw it back towards him. Either way, the inning is over. We'll wait for some kind of explanation, maybe, maybe not. Council's still arguing. He may get tossed. Either way, we go to the eighth. Tying run at first. Right off the end of the bat, little cue shot, long run, Mejia's Breen, he's got it for out number two, and Taylor's off the bag, and it hits Taylor, now it goes wide, and Taylor's going to end up at second base. There you go. Man, that'll be an error. Turning lemons into lemonade right well, there. I'll say, that could have ended the game and probably should have, it would have if it didn't hit him. The Brewers really catching a break right there, Tyrone oh. Taylor was nearly at second base. As Mejia Spreen made the catch, he had to go all the way back to first, and the throw hit him right in the back and trickled into foul territory. They had him doubled up to end the game, perhaps with a good throw, but it wasn't. So he ends up at second base with two down. Mejia Spreen, nice play. Will Myers was not going to get there. That's what I say, trouble. But he went out and out and out with a tough angle, made a nice running backhand grab. And then trying to double up the pinch runner Taylor, they threw the ball away. Goes to second base, hit him in the back yeah. on the throw. Huh? Taylor with a big lead at second base. The pitch, and Braun strikes out. Ball game is over. And the Padres win tonight. They snap their six game losing streak. Kirby Yates notches. 41st save of the year and the Brewers four game winning streak is over. He's 22 for his last 110 at the plate. That's where I like to see him hit a nice little line drive into right field. Yes. Right center field base hit score Tyler. Or do that. <laughs> Hammer deep left. And Acuna has Goddard. Number 40 a mammoth home run to make it 2 nothing. Kevin Seitzer has been saying for a few days, let's get him to 40 and then let's see him take off. Well, he just did to put Atlanta in front. 
Yeah, you know, guys, I, I don't care how young, how good you are. It's been a lot on him, I think, with everybody wanting him to get to 40. Been stuck on 39. Hopefully this is something that can relax him a little bit now and just let him hit. Nola deals. 0-2 is smashed deep to left. This thing is going to sprout wings and fly away. Wow. Home run number 40 of the season. It's 2-0 Braves as Acuna hit one into another county. Admire that one all you want, big boy. 2-0 Braves. Not only did that go a long way, Ben, it was on a low trajectory. I can't wait to see what the exit velocity was on that. That was a missile. Exit velocity of 112. Yeah. Well, half of the 40-40 equation is accomplished. But he hasn't changed anything in his swing, and, and I applaud him. Drives this one deep to left center. This has got a chance. Get up, ball. Get out of here and die. They tie the ball game as Bijo delivers the long ball. That is his fifth home run against the Orioles this year. Rudis Gurriel Jr. He hits one high and deep, and this one's going to go. Back to back home runs for the Blue Jays. Quickly, Toronto has struck with back to back solo home runs to take a two to one lead. The last time the Blue Jays hit three home runs in an inning was last September 20th at Rogers Center against Tampa Bay. It was the ninth inning. Jansen, Gurriel, and Smoke all went deep. Noah kicks and deals, swinging a high fly ball to center field. That ball has carry. Back it goes. A leaping grab. Austin Hayes caught it. He took a home run away from Guerrero. What a play by Austin Hayes. He absolutely caught it. Austin Hayes went up against that seven foot fence and prevents the Blue Jays from going back to back to back. Austin Hayes robs him of a home run and Guerrero takes his cap off and raises it high saluting Hayes. Oriole fans there is your center fielder of the future.